Hey, this is Jason with Novice Temps, and a couple of months ago, I won a giant milling machine at an auction. So, uh, this is a Shoblin 53, so it's the largest Shoblin mill. Uh, let me flip around the camera, you don't need to see me, and it's... Oh. This beast is a giant two-ton milling machine. Uh, I didn't expect to win the auction. Uh, this thing only cost me 750 bucks, 900 after tax, plus another 300 in truck rental and moving supplies. Uh, I had, didn't even know if it worked until recently. I've been building a three-phase converter in order to run this thing, to, to power it up. Uh, and I just got that working. There's... A bit of trial and error and lots of burnt electrical components uh, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, I just wanted to give you a good nice look at my beautiful surplus UW College surplus milling machine. So uh, there aren't a whole lot of Shoblin milling Shoblin mills out. Uh, they did a lot more lathes. Their lathes are fairly popular. Um, but not a lot of people, especially in the U.S., this is a Swiss company, uh, and they are known as, like, the watchmaker uh, machine creators. So, uh, there aren't a whole lot of machines, but for 750 bucks, I really couldn't pass up uh, this auction. It was I didn't expect to win. I expected this to go for well over $1,000. And I was very surprised when I actually won my my bid. My top bid was seven fifty, and it didn't go above that. Um, and then the challenge was getting it home. Uh, yeah, that was that was fun. Uh, we got it forklifted onto a, a trailer. I rented the truck and trailer, uh, and then we used a pallet jack and a winch to get it off the trailer, and then the pallet jack itself was just fine for moving it around the the garage here. So uh, I mounted it to some four by sixes uh, for the move, and they're probably it's probably going to stay on that. So to power this thing, uh, I obviously don't have three phase in my garage, uh, so th this is obviously a three phase machine. Um, so I needed to figure that out. Uh, a friend of mine found a five horsepower three phase motor, um, at some farm auction. Uh, so he picked that up for me, uh, didn't know if it ran. Um, we, I picked up some components. We got some capacitors from the local electronics, uh, supply, uh, the silver ones there are run capacitors. The blue one is actually also a run capacitor, but I'm using it as a starting capacitor. I've got some bleed resistors on there, a button to engage and disengage the start capacitor, and then I've got an external fuse box. We have the source using the welder plug, my welder plug, so 240, 220, 240 coming in. And into the box we have this line here uh, running out to that motor so uh, I'm using the breaker as a switch and I know I shouldn't do that but it's what I've got going on now uh, I may add an external switch to it later so the concept is you flip the switch that thing starts up that thing doesn't run very efficiently until you engage the start capacitor in which case that ramps up to its idle RPMs. Then you disengage the start capacitor and it keeps running. And what that does is that runs off of the two legs of the three phase coming from the wall and it becomes a generator generating the third phase to give me three, uh, three phase power coming out. And then the capacitors, those two capacitors, just balance it to separate the phases into uh, closer to 120. I haven't measured it. I'm probably not going to measure it. Uh, it's probably good enough. Um, and then that all gets outputted to my twist lock connection, which runs my mill. 
So, uh, let me show you what, what's going on. Well, first, let me show you some of the things that went wrong. So, you can see here the black thing is a true start capacitor. Uh, and this thing is a beast running 220 to 250 volts AC. And it's 400, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, they're 430 to 516 microfarads. That thing is a monster. But I had it wired incorrectly. Uh, I had it wired such that it was always in the circuit. Uh, the motor ran great. It was It was flying. Uh, and then there was a whole lot of smoke coming out of this box and a whole lot of oil all over the bottom of it. Uh, that capacitor no longer reads 500 microfarads. It reads closer to 300. Uh, and I'm not going to use it. <laughs> uh, I do have another true start capacitor on the way. Um, I picked up the this guy, which is a 200 microfarad capacitor, and it seems to do the job. Um, but it's... It's got a bolt on the bottom, so it doesn't really sit quite right. And I don't like the screw top terminals. They're probably better for certain applications, but this is not one of them. So the other thing that's interesting is I have, these are, used to be, uh, 13 kilo ohm, two watt resistors. Uh, and I burned two of them. And these I was using as bleed resistors for the capacitors so that they'd be safe uh, to handle soon after shutting the whole system off. What's interesting is they ran fine until I shut off the mill. And once I shut off the mill, then the, those resistors burned. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't burn when uh, just running the idler motor and not the mill. But it wasn't until there's draw from the mill and then that draw stops that the, the resistors burned. Um, I don't know if it's because the capacitors are actually discharging then or, or what. Um, but I replaced those with 15 kilo ohm uh, 10 watt resistors and those things should not burn. They should be fine. So that should be all my electrical problems uh, sorted. Uh, let me fire it up for you. All right, so let's fire this thing up. So, using the breaker as a switch, flip that on, press the button. So you can hear the uh, motor, the idler motor, was really rough until I hit the button to engage the bigger capacitor to supply more power to the third leg of the idler. So now that's all feeding power to the mill. And I have a wrench because the handle's broken. Okay. So the light's on, so the mill's on. Now It works! And I can flip the table. We have power on the table. We have power on the saddle. And... Oh, come on. Shut it off. It doesn't like the, the knee. Uh, to engage while the spindle's running. But, you can see, we have power to the knee. So, and then, this adjusts the speed of all the table workings. Uh, the uh, rapid tra traverse, it engages something, but it doesn't seem like it's doing anything. So I have to figure out why that's not working. Um, you can adjust the uh, spindle speed with this. Uh, also, I'm not sure that the lubrication, I don't know if it's just empty or if something's not working with that. Uh, but I'm gonna shut this down. My three phase idler is louder than the actual mill. 
And that's it. <laughs>